I come from a town where the people look brown, talk black, and act white. <laughs> and a generation of education that taught me that all I need to get by is a C. And this town is a big shoes, but little steps town of people who walk down the street to avoid the street light, of people who don't know which side of the road they're really on. A displaced generation, the ones who never grew up in the land they come from because money speaks louder than words in this town. And it's a little bit of hypocrisy that there's no jobs, and those that are advertised only want to attract the eyes of those with a life that is full of experience. But when your life has been divided in between playing football in the park and taking care of your nan, it's suddenly a very long walk to that interview. Just long enough to experience the disguise of a proper person living a proper life who has uh, always paid taxes and has never been to jail, has uh, always stayed away from drugs and unmotivated. But as he sits down in the giant's den of ink and men with suits and ties way more expensive than his Primark laces, he suddenly thinks to his dear nan and new family of three and holds on to his chair for dear life as they fire the questions of commitment and make him jump through red hoops of shame because he needs this job to help offload the recent inheritance of a mortgage. But the boss man don't see that. So he's been rejected from 28 jobs on the basis that stereotyping isn't a factor they type on a sheet. It's a factor hiding somewhere in people's eyes, like a filter on a camera that warps what you see. And suddenly, all black boys are gangsters and all Muslim teens with beards walk around with baggy jeans because they're all carrying a bomb. All Polish guys can only be builders. Indians are born to be doctors, not actors. And you see, you should never hire a white girl because she'll soon ask for maternity leave. <laughs> this town is a collection of cut lives that are way beyond Band-Aids. The only thing that will keep this town alive is love. And there is so little of it to see under these sad sodium lamplights. It either shines bright like a torch in the public eye, a fairy tale marriage, a prince is born, or it's barely, barely staying alive behind closed doors. And yet, in this melting pot of colors and creeds, there's people cutting at me if my girlfriend's white or my best friend is black and gay, but didn't the black eyed peas once say we gotta have love to set us straight? Why can't it be in this town that we can walk up to a complete stranger and say, I don't know you, but I love you.